Ah. Does your scalp itch? Do you have like dry flakes? If so, you might have dandruff. But what is really causing it and what is the solution? Let's get into it. What's up guys, Trav White here. Welcome back to the channel. We cover the science of grooming, hair, and style. And if you are a nerd like me and love seeing the research, please hit that like and subscribe button, join the family. Also, if you're a fellow hair grower, and that's beards too, by the way, then come join the Mannered Mains Facebook family. The guys in there are so incredible, so supportive. They're just really engaging and they make my life a whole lot easier by being really educated and helpful and answering questions. So yeah, if I'm not answering a question, hit up that group and I'm sure they will have the answers. Okay, so before we get to the solutions for dandruff, we need to make some really important distinctions. First up is the definition of dandruff. So, according to Merriam-Webster, dandruff is small pieces of dead skin in a person's hair. That's it. So, the important thing is to identify the causes of these flakes because there is a big difference between dandruff from a dry scalp and dandruff from the skin condition known as seborrheic dermatitis. The biggest difference being dry scalp versus oily scalp. When you have a dry scalp, the old skin cells die and shed off and new skin cells on your scalp emerge. And this is technically dandruff according to the definition, but hold off on going out and getting the head and shoulders really fast because the causes of dry scalp could be from something completely different than seborrheic dermatitis. It could be from an allergic reaction. It could be from your shampoo and conditioner. It could be from cold or dry air. It could be from hair products irritating your skin, or it could be genetic. If you have dandruff from seborrheic dermatitis, I'm just gonna call it SD for simplicity, instead of new skin cells growing in, causing the old ones to flake off, the skin shedding process is sped up from this fungal imbalance on your scalp. So the most widely accepted scientific consensus for what causes SD are three etiological factors. The first is presence of malassezia, which is a common fungus that lives on everyone's scalp. The second is the amount of sebum secretion, which is what the malassezia feed on. And then the third is the individual sensitivity. But healthy and unhealthy scalps both have malassezia in them. So why does it only affect 50% of us? Well, these three Three factors have been the consensus for such a long time because scientists would study the scalp of people with SD dandruff and they would find higher levels of the malassezia fungi, so there was a correlation. So the idea when sebum production is high, there's an oily scalp, the malassezia goes to town on that sebum like an all-you-can-eat buffet because they have way more triglycerides to feed on. And because they love these fatty acids, this creates an imbalance of sebum and malassezia. And if the individual's skin is overly sensitive, then this can cause their skin to shed faster and bring on that seborrheic dermatitis. And pyrithione zinc, which is found in head and shoulders, has been shown to kill the malassezia. So this sounds like a solid solution for an annoying problem. But more recent studies, one in 2013 and one in 2016 in two different journals, show that seborrheic dermatitis is a little more complicated. They found a much wider diversity of microorganisms in scalps with SD dandruff, and while higher amounts of malassezia did correlate with higher amounts of SD, they don't believe it to be the main cause. In other words, people who have dandruff could have an imbalance of many, many other microorganisms that live on your scalp as well, and not just malassezia. So in both studies, one of the problem bacteria that kept reappearing was a bacteria called Staphylococcus. Here's a chart showing the distribution between normal scalp oil and dandruff scalp oil. But the, the large red imbalance is the dandruff scalp. It has a higher level of staphylococcus. You can see that in red. Here's another pie chart I'll pull up showing an increase in staphylococcus and malassezia in SD dandruff scalps. So it looks like SD is a multifungal imbalance issue and not just from one bacteria. So you may need to try a multivariate attack if your head and shoulders is not working. So since both dry scalp and dandruff caused by SD cause shedding and an itchy scalp, how can you tell the difference? Well, if you have seborrheic dermatitis, the main difference is your scalp will be oily and not dry. And the scales will probably be yellow, red, or white, and it'll probably also be oily as well. So here's a quick chart I'll pull up that shows the main differences between dandruff from dry scalp and dandruff from seborrheic dermatitis. And I'm gonna link to this in the description as well. Uh, it's also in my hair type PDF if you guys have that. So 
As you can see, the dandruff flakes are bigger, oilier, and they're either yellow, red, or white. And a dry scalp is usually just smaller, dry, white flakes. So what are the solutions for both of these? If you have dandruff from dry scalp, chances are you can get rid of this just from moisture and nourishing your scalp. So doing deep conditioning masks, using hair oils, coconut oil, jojoba oil, argan oil. These are all great ways to keep your hair nourished. You can also get a shampoo and conditioner that contain protein in it to replenish the hair proteins. Another thing you can do is to try changing up your shampooing frequency. So if you're currently doing a daily wash, it's possible you could be overwashing and your sebum production is all out of whack. If you have a genetically dry scalp and you're already cutting back on your washes, then maybe try increasing and seeing if, you know, shampooing maybe two to three times a week could help keep your scalp moisturized. So if you do in fact have dandruff from SD, then you will actually need an antifungal shampoo or a stronger prescription from a dermatologist. So you wanna look for shampoos with multiple treatments like pyrithione zinc, ketoconazole, coal tar, or salicylic acid. And some great choices for you are Neutrogena T-Gel, which contains coal tar, Neutrogena T-Sal, which contains salicylic acid, Head & Shoulders, of course, has pyrithione zinc, and then Nizerol contains ketoconazole. So I'll link to all these in the description. I also found two studies which show evidence for tea tree and lemongrass oil having antimicrobial effects and some improvement with dandruff, although I wouldn't consider it a cure. But one 2015 study from the School of Cosmetic Science at a university in Thailand and found that lemongrass hair tonic with a formulation of 10% lemongrass seemed to be really effective in reducing dandruff. There is another 2002 study in the Journal of American Academy of Dermatology found a 5% tea tree oil shampoo showed a 41% improvement in dandruff compared to the 11% improvement of the placebo group. So adding some tea tree oil or lemongrass oil to your current shampoo and conditioner could be a good place to start if you want a natural solution. But in my personal opinion, the antifungal shampoos are going to be more effective. And in severe cases, you will need to talk to a dermatologist. So if you have a flaky, dry scalp, don't worry, it's probably not seborrheic dermatitis. But as always, I'm not a doctor and this isn't medical advice. I'm only right like 98.6579% of the time. Just kidding, I'm wrong way more than that. But I will see you guys in the next video. Keep on growing. Peace. <clears throat> Here we go. We are rolling water. <clears throat> All right, science. Jesse Pinkman. Breaking Bad was a great show. Probably one of the best shows ever written, in my opinion. <laughs> Let me say that again. Staphylococcus. <laughs> Good be a place to. Uh,